So we're going to talk about today Parsha Shlach Lecha. This is the story of the spies. And Shlach Lecha. And in the Chumash, it's on page 798. You have to see the story just very briefly. I think you all know the story about the Maraglim. Okay. So before we look at the story, what, what, what was the sin of the Maraglim? What was the what was the Lashon Hara, Lashon Hara about the land. about the land? Um, well, let's go back again. Should they have sent spies? Whose idea was it? The people they didn't have faith in what God said. Right. They wanted to be uh, comfort. They, what's the word I'm looking for? They wanted to be. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sorry, guys. They wanted clarity. They want uh, yes. They, they, Reassurance. Oh, yeah. So God them. says, sure. Okay. Okay, Moshe, tell them they can send spies. <laughs> One second. I had a paper here. I don't know what to do with it. Did I, did I have any papers here? Did I put, no, I had a paper here that I ran off. I don't know if he took it or not. Oh, why? I won't be here. All right, we'll be here today. Yeah, good. Okay, so here's. Let's go back to the question. Should they have sent spies? So, the question is, maybe they should have simply relied upon a kaddish baruch Whose idea was it to send spies or scouts? Whose idea? Whose idea? The people. The people wanted. The people wanted. According to the parsha, the people wanted it. Moshe went to God to say. No, but before Moshe right. decided, I think that people the asked people Moshe. Went to Moshe. And, or so Moshe thought about really, it. There's three choices, aren't there? Either <laughs> Moshe, the people wanted it, Moshe wanted or Moshe wanted it, or, Hashem wanted or the Almighty it. wanted it. <laughs> right, so that's really the question. And, and depending on how you answer that question will determine where the guilt and responsibility is for sending them Raglan. If the people wanted it, they made the mistake. If Moshe made a decision, he made the error. Or somewhere the error is... Okay. The, 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 or maybe the, things went off the rails afterwards. No, no, the idea of sending the Meraglim was not a bad idea. Why not? Actually, Because you, they could have come back with a, hey, it's fantastic out there, let's go. Or, you know, and, but that's okay. Let's go check it out. But why even send, why even find out if it is or it isn't? Didn't God say it is? That's going to be tough. You've got you to find out on your own. Sometimes. So you have to find it. Good point, though, that you bring up. <laughs> what if they came back with all positive reports? Yeah, nothing would have happened. And that's it would have been so perfect. So they would have come back with a positive report, and they would have gone in, they would have gone in with greater vigor, greater, uh, yeah, greater energy. And, and Hashem would have punished them. Right, right, so maybe it's neither Moshe nor the people nor God's fault. Maybe it's the fault of the spies. That's the fourth choice. Yeah. The fault this, of the scouts themselves. I think, this, I think the mistake is was when they come back, instead of giving this report to Moshe, they give it to everybody. Oh, okay. Meragli, Meragli is a okay. Nobody knows what's going on. Right. Okay, so they should, have, they should have reported to Moshe, the general, to tell him what it was, and then he did. Right. Right. I guess the answer lies in what happened after the spies got killed, the ten of them. The two lived, who came back with positive reports. Right. And then what happens to the nation? Too late or they well, the nation is forced to stay in the desert for 40 years. So that's, that's, we, that's, we know the end of the story. We well, know the end of the story is not good. The question, the where does it go off the rails? Where, does the, where was the, the flaw? Where did the flaw occur? Where was the basic problem? Every, every defeat can be traced to something that wasn't calculated correctly. The deep-seated flaw, the deep-seated flaw, was the people not having no, faith. Not. Okay. So Jeff is saying one approach. Okay, one approach, which is the people, God said, you're going into the land. They said, let's go. Everything until now that God said was good, right? No more, we'll get rid of the Egyptians. The Egyptians are gone. Amalek came, we'll get rid of Amalek. And we'll go to Torah. Um, even when they sinned, the God moved on with them. So, so they should have simply accepted they, to go in to the land. And that's one of the approaches in the Medrash, clearly. Okay, so the, even the sense of sending spies is something that was not needed. Okay, good. So some have said that that's not, I think Hanoch said it's not a bad idea. Did you say it's not a bad idea? Or no, you said that, was, that was me. You, you Albert, Albert said that it's not a bad idea to send spies because you want to, why is it not a bad idea? Oh, I, I think you want to be prepared. You want to I mean, scout the land and could, know where you're going, correct. That makes sense. In other words, oh, God said it's a good idea to go in. Recon, yeah. But you can't just, living a world is not simply about living faith if you can actually figure it out yourself. You right. can't just say, God provide, God provide. You got to go out and get a job. 
Musha, right. you guys, you and Albert, here's the point that I, I'm lost in. And I bring this up again. Shmuel, the prophet, right. was told to anoint King David yes. while Saul was the king. Yes. And he and, and God says, go anoint him. Then he comes back to God with a retort. Well, God, I'm scared for my life. Okay, fine, Shmuel. Then do this and that. Okay. So why can't the Israelites, were told by God to do something, as Shmuel was, yeah. why can't they go back and say, well, we want, re- we want to make sure we're going to be okay too. So where's the difference in, the di- in that dynamic? So what you're really asking is wh- wh- where, what was wrong with sending spies and coming back with a bad report. Well, I wonder. Right, so that's, we're going to see that in the Ramban. Ramban discusses, uh, once again, this is one of those critical Rambans, the crucial Rambans in the Torah. Where the Ramban has a very, it's a very long Ramban. The Ramban goes out of his way to explain that maybe it wasn't such a bad idea to send spies. Okay, you know, we... Were, we, you know, you told us we're going to go in. We got to figure it out. There was something part of the mission. Mission went off the rails, but not initially sending the mission itself. Yeah, every military nation goes to fight. Right. Even if it's a spy, right. sure, that's okay. 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 Every war movie you see, they always right. send a group of people mm-hmm. to look and see where the where the enemies are, where, where the armaments are, right. and all that. There is a false possibility. Yeah. Nobody's fault. It was all according to plan. But that assumes it's their decision. What? That assumes it's their decision. It's always at some point that they maybe they, they, they will overcome that. But, uh, no, words, but, but assuming, assuming that Hashem knows the future that they will fail means it's surely not God's idea. If you want to do it, if you do it, you figure it out on your own. And I know you'll fail, but you'll figure it out. You'll, you've got to learn it yourself. Sometimes you let people, some, you know, there's two ways to teach a child to cross the street. You teach them how to cross the street, and then you let them get hit by the car. It's not, the, not, not a good idea. Don't try this at home. But sometimes you have to teach people to be successful by first failing. Right? And you'll, you'll, you throw them in the sharks. You don't throw them in the sharks, you throw them in the deep water. That's it. That's it. Maybe not. Because they do it like a child. They didn't know that. So, what, what, you, what, what I think Dan is really trying to say is that the story may not be an error as much as a learning experience that the people that the people realized they were not ready to go into the land. As difficult as it sounds, it took them 40 years to get over there being a slave mentality. They themselves couldn't go in, the children, their children went in. So the decision or the conclusion of the story is not as bad as it sounds or may have been predestined already because these people were still thinking like slaves where, you know, you've got to give me my food. Slave does not, is less motivated to do things on their own. Slave simply does what the master says. Slave does not understand independence. Where they were not really ready to fight for what they needed to get through life for. So here's the question. If we learn from our failures and not our successes, and if this was a chesed from Hashem to, you know, to strengthen the Jewish people and, 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 and grow, etc. Then why do we say they were punished for all these years so in the desert? So I'm not saying that I necessarily agree with this. Let me be very clear. I'm just saying, but you can see that uh, the outcome of the whole story is not as negative as it looks yeah, yeah. because in the end of it, maybe they would not have been successful in the land of Israel had they gone in right away. They were not fully equipped, mentally equipped, um, uh, attitudinally equipped to be able to be successful here. Yeah. In the so, same vein, I, I see the, that the... the when Hashem says that Moshe Rabbeinu cannot go into the land right. of Israel, that Joshua is going to be there. Right. It's, just, it's the same idea that uh, he wanted a new person to lead the people, the nation, mm-hmm. you know, into the land. Okay, now, so I, new mentality. Right. so I, I, I'd like to go through this, a very long piece of Ramban. Now, my challenge is I don't really have enough books to go around. So well, let's see how we can figure this out. So we have... Yeah. I have a, I have a Hebrew you. English. Uh, you have a Hebrew English? So you can share with Jeff. I have a Hebrew English version here that can work for these guys here. Okay. And there's a couple of Hebrew versions going around, and I have another Hebrew version. No safer? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You want a Hebrew version? Okay, good. So it's going to be here. Okay. All right. So this is this long piece of Ramban. The Ramban is going to quote Rashi. And Ramban actually seems to say... My mind has to quantify what exactly the error is because maybe this was not such a bad idea. Okay? So, I guess be, rather than maybe reading the story itself, because I think you know the story, right? The biggest story begins that Moshe says, Hashem says to Moshe, send people 
If you look in the story in Dvarim chapter 1, it looks like the people, the people want to send the spies. Here it looks like God is saying to Moshe, if you want, you guys want to, you can send spies. Maybe it's really a com- it's, it's a, com- it's a co- not a compromise, it's a combination of both. The people want, and then God says, okay, do. Or maybe Moshe wants to do it. They send the spies, the spies, and Moshe tells them exactly what to look for. Moshe tells the people that they're going to go to the land, and you look how the land is. Are the people strong? The people weak? Few and numerous? Is the land good? The land bad? How are the cities? Are they open? Or are they fortified? How is the land? Is it fertile? Is it lean? And what exactly it is? So you know what? T- I've just changed my mind. I think I'd like to look at some of the psukim in the in the Chumash before we look at the Ramban, because you'll see what the, what the spies come back with. That's what we're trying to see. Right? Whose idea? Whose idea is it? That we've given a lot of varieties. God, people, Moshe, maybe it was natural. But we'll see what the Ramban says in terms of how it really was a good idea to send it. Maybe it was Moshe's idea. Maybe it was the people's idea. Maybe everybody thought it was a good idea. Okay, so let's take a look at page 798. And that's where I started with and we got off the track. 798, 799. So God, Hashem speaks to Moses saying, send forth men if you please, shlach lecha, you, if you want to send, send, and let them spy out the land of Canaan that I give to the children of Israel. It almost looks like God is responding to Moshe. It doesn't say, by the way, normally Hashem says do this, but shlach lecha, send for yourselves if you please, send out people if you please. What does it mean if you please? When did God give choice to things that we should do or not do? So it looks like there was a request and God is responding. One man from each of his father's tribes you'll send, a leader among them, he sends them forth. And how many people does Moshe send? So Moshe sends out 12 spies, one for each of the tribes. And they're listed by names. Uh, they, they, try, they follow the tribe of Reuven, Shimon, Levi, uh, Yehuda, Ephraim. Actually, they go out of order. They go Reuven, Shimon, Yehuda, Issachar, Ephraim, Benjamin, Zvulun, Yosef, Dun, uh, Asher, Naphtali, and God. And these are the, and it gives their names as well. It's a very unusual kind of order. It not, does not appear to be the normal order of the tribes. Moshe sends them out to spy the land of Canaan. Here's the mission that they get. This is this is the key. Verse 17. So Moshe says to them, um, "You're going to go out and spy the land. And what are you going to do? Where are you going to start from? Actually, in verse 17, you're going to spy out the land of Canaan." And he says, Aluz Abaneg, go up from the south and climb the mountain. Why should they come from the south? They're in the south. They're in, they're in the south. Okay? So the natural, the natural shortest way to enter it is in the south. So therefore, see if the south is a good way to go in. Maybe the south is not the best way to go in. But first, see if the easy way, first, see if the short way is the good way to go. And then from there, go up to the mountains, continue up through the Negev, and you'll eventually reach, you'll reach the, um, the mountainous area in Yudha. Short. They could go from Yamatichon, but they're not on the Yamatichon. They're right now south. They're south. They're, they're coming from Sinai, so they're in the south. It says, go up to the Negev and see if that's the way to go. If not, you can come around from the plain, is what you're saying, and go around from the other side. Correct. Was there a spy from Levi? Was there a spy from Levi? No, there's not a spy from Levi. So there was only one from the tribes? There is a, no, there is Menashe. I'm sorry, if I skipped Menashe, there is Menashe. There is Menashe. So there's no tribe from Levi, which, by the way, may be why the Levi may not have been included in this, this, in this decision that they, have, they can't get into Eretz Yisrael. Maybe the Levi were allowed to go into Eretz Yisrael. But let's see what the mission is, because it's important to know if they messed up the mission or not. So Moshe says in verse 15, he tells them how to go. What are you going to look for? Read the Madaras Mahi, see the land, what it is, the Amay Yashevala, the people that are living there. Here's what you've got to find out. This is your, your, your mission. The people strong or weak. Are the people Me'ad and Rav? Are the people few or numerous? What did they come back with and by the way say? They said they're, they said they're strong. So, so are, were they unfaithful to their mission? No. They were told, go find out if they're strong or weak. They came back, they said, oh, they're terribly strong. So what, what's the they left? What's so bad? They said they, they did what Moshe told them. And then Moshe says, find out how the land is. Is the land good or is the land bad? When they come back and they said... Land is good. However, the next part, are the cities open or are they fortified? They came back and say these were very strong cities. And how's the land? Is the land fertile or lean? And the Yeshba eats a Mayan, are there trees there? Are there not trees? Is it open land? Is it a forested area? 
and then you will be um, you will t- um, take from the fruit of the land and bring it back. It happens to me this was the time of the fruit of the fire, the time of the grape season, grape harvesting, and they actually bring back some fruit from as well. So they go up and they land, they finally go up to the Negev and they come to Chevron. This is the mission, and they meet Achachim, Achim, and Shesha, and Talmai, the children of the Anak. These are humongous people, giant people, and you'd be scared of them if you met them. Okay, they come to Nachal Eshkol. They cut off a, um, a, a, a cluster of grapes. The grapes, grapes are so big they carry them on a double pole. The pomegranates and figs, and they come back and so forth. They return from the end of the spying at the end of forty days, and they came to Moshe and Aaron, the entire assembly of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Parai and Kodesh. They brought them back the report. They brought them exactly what they were supposed to find out. And they reported to them. They said, you know what? We did our mission. We went to the place that you told us. And really, you went to know if it's a good land or bad land. This is land of milk and honey. Right. But. And here, and here is the fruit. Okay. And by the way, milk and honey, we, we talk about the land of milk and honey referring to Eretz Yisrael. At one point, the people, when they want to go back to the land of Eretz Mitzrayim, they call it also land of milk and honey. So milk and honey is a generic term for land that is fairly fertile, as opposed to a desert. Desert, do not think of the Sahara Desert. Think of traveling outside Jerusalem, or out going to what's called Midbar Yehuda, the Jian Desert, which has got a lot of vegetation, but has very few trees. So a desert does not really have trees. It is not necessarily completely bare. Just a hard place to grow a lot of things. You really got to work the land. The land is rocky. The land is hilly. The land does not have a, local, a lot of local um, water. However, what do we see? We saw the land, the people that lived in the land. They say in verse 20, 28, they were powerful. The cities are fortified. The cities were very big, just like you asked us to find out. And we saw the offspring of the Amalek, of the, of, of the I'm sorry, of the Anak, of the giant. And we also, Amalek was there. And the land has got the Amori and the Kanani and of all over the place. And that's where they, they keep going. And then Kalev, excuse me, stops them and says, before they go on, he says, you know what? You, we can do it. And we can take the land, however, the people then say in verse 31, the, the spies continue in verse 31, says we can't go up, because it's too strong from us. And then here is where, and this is what Jeff said, in verse 32, they spread, how do they translate this? They spread the evil report on the land, they spread an evil report about the land that they had spied, saying the land that we had spied through, uh, Eretz Ochel Yeshvel here. It's a peep, it's a land that eats its inhabitants, and all the people that we saw were huge, and we we can't do it. And then the feeling were there, and we were like their eyes as grasshoppers and ants and so forth and so on. So why is it lashon hara? So why is it lashon hara? Well, first of all, lashon hara can be true. Lashon hara is not fit, not bad. But in this case, it's meant to be. Lashon hara is not false. Lashon hara is bad. If you want lashon hara, you accept it. Put some tori. Right. In other words, so that means every word we speak is lashon hara because it could be true, it could be false. No? So if something, if some, if something is public knowledge, it's not lashon hara because everybody knows it. But if I share with you something about an individual yeah. that is negative, that does not serve your purpose and does not serve my purpose, I am spreading lashon hara about a person. So but here it may be serving a purpose. The purpose, yeah. the purpose was because they're supposed to go into the land, but the purpose is they're saying we can't go in. The, you can go right. If you want so Kali's response is, you're right, we can't do it by ourselves. We were never supposed to do it by ourselves. Hashem told us to do it. So it is Lush and Hara, it is true, but it's a negative spin. The land is just strong, the land has got giants, the land has got big cities, but it's a fertile land, and if Hashem wants us to take the land, Yechol Nuchala, we can do yeah, it. And the spies said, we can't do it. It's not no, possible. But maybe they, what they're saying is, we can't do it from this end, but maybe if we go a different route, we can do it. That's not what they say. They say it can't be done. They say it can't be done. Can't and the people, be done. Un- the maybe people from this end. And the people understand it can't be done. And the people realize it can't be done. And the people give up hopes. All of life is about challenges, and the life is not easy. Now, putting your life on the line, fighting to go take over a land, is pretty, it's pretty difficult. Right. Especially if you expected it to get, you know, to simply walk in, and you're going to get the land the same way they get the man every morning. But they, they really have not said necessarily a lie until they get to the point that we can't do it. And also, when they say credit to the they have to say that. Okay. So, 
So what's, what's interesting is they say Eretz Ochelot Yoshvel. They say that after Kalev stops them. In other words, the actual first initial report, which is interpreted very negatively by the people, which of course they're saying we can't do it, but we can't do it. The land is great land, but we can't do it. And Kalev stops and says, yes, we can. And then they go on to say, oh, it's Eretz Yochel Yoshveha. So, so the Ramban will actually, the Ramban will actually show you. Ramban, will, we have to do the Ramban. The Ramban will actually point out that forty years later, when Moshe speaks to the people about going into the land of Eretz Yisrael, he also tells them how difficult the land it is. So, if telling them that the land is difficult is the problem, why does Moshe seem to say the same thing forty years later, the next generation in Sefer Dvarim, in his last last words, when Moshe says you're going to go into the land, it's a difficult land, but Hashem will be with you and follow the mitzvah and you'll be okay. And that's the difference. Forty years later, Moshe says it's a difficult land. It's Eretz Ochel Yoshveha, right? It's difficult people, big people, strong people. But God has said you'll take it, you'll take, you'll take control, and you'll do it. It's not without casualties, but you'll do it. And here the spies are saying we can't do it on our own, and we can't do it. Period. Moshe uses almost the same words. You'll see it in the Ramban. The Ramban will, will point out that Moshe seems to say the same thing. That's why there's a really good, great Ramban to do it. It's a long Ramban. You have to have a little patience for it to go through it. But the Ramban makes it very clear that inherently sending spies, the Ramban's approach is not what Jeff mentioned initially, which is that lack of amuna, lack of faith. He does mention that approach later at the end. He brings that approach in. But the Ramban's approach is not just a lack of amuna. To send spies is not a lack of amuna. To reject the mission is a lack of amuna. To send spies is natural. Anyone who goes out on a combat mission, anyone who kind of wants to attack an army, wants to send out to get reconnaissance. You send up drones today. Right? That's why Iran shot down the drone. You send up drones, you send in people, you send in special forces to gather information. Right? You send in SEALs and other Navy SEALs and other people to find out what's going on the ground. Or you plan spies or you have eavesdropping equipment. You need to know what's going on. You need to better identify what it is. You study the D-Day invasion, the kind of information they tried to get, some of which was right, some of which was wrong. Right? But the mission was successful because they tried to gather some information. So there's nothing wrong with gathering information. The problem is what do you do with the information? How do you interpret the information? What does it mean? So let's take a look at this very long Ramban. It's going to take us a while to go through, so let's put on our seatbelts, okay? It's the first, the first Ramban that I... Right, I think I gave out some Rambans. You have the English one, okay? It's going to be on the first page here, right, right at the very beginning, okay? Very good gimbal. Shlach Lecha Anashim. Everybody has something to follow? You good guys are good there? Okay. Shlach Lecha Anashim. Um, and you guys are together. You can look on with them. Okay. You come see, okay? All right. Shlach Lecha Anashim. So it says the Ramban, first the Ramban quotes Rashi's approach. I'm not commanding you, but as Rashi seems to say when, 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 they say, when it says, If you guys want to send, God says, I'll go along with it. You've got to learn your lesson. You've got to figure it out yourself. Okay, I told you to go into the land of Israel. It's not my idea, but if you want to go, go. Because the Jewish people came, and this is how it says in Devarim chapter, chapter 1. The people, where are you? But if I gave you the place right here, Shlach Lecha. Yeah, no, I was looking for the continuation. Oh, sorry, the Chumash, there's probably, there's a very long Ramban, so the Chumash probably trans continues pages later. Okay. That's why I didn't give you the Chumash yeah, yeah. look okay. at. So in Dvarim chapter 1, it says, Vatigravun Eli Kulchem, the people came to me, says Moshe, and it looks like that it was the people's idea to send spies. So the Rashi says, Ramban is quoting Rashi first at the beginning, that according to Rashi's approach, which is based upon the measure, the people said we want to send spies. They came to Moshe. Moshe asked Hashem. Moshe nimlach mashkina. Moshe asked Hashem. And Omar, and God's response was, Ani Omar dilehem I told the people it's a good land. As I already told them back in Shmos chapter 3, God said, I'm going to take you out of the difficulty of Egypt to a good land. I promised you it's a good land. You don't believe me. By their lives. That's, that's in my problem. Ken, more. Uh, but I'm going to allow them to make a mistake. But Varm Raglim Laman Lo Yeshua says Rashi quoting from the Medrash. You guys want to send it. This is not my idea. You guys basically go hang yourself. You want to figure it out. You think you know better than me. You do it, and you're going to fail. That's what Hashem Rashi interprets, and Rashi is quoting the Medrash Agada 
from, from, uh, to tell us that the real people, the real decision to send spies, the whole decision was a negative decision. This is Allah. I want to keep saying it's Jeff's idea. It's not Jeff's idea. But Allah, the idea that this is, this is along the lines that it's a break within the faith of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. God says, I told them it's good. I've explained to them this is good for them. They don't believe me. They're still arguing. They're still fetching. Let them go figure it out themselves. And I'm washing my hands from it. But you see, Hashem said, I'll give them place to be, be mistaken. Yeah. I mean, it could be they really want it. But Hashem even pushed them to their mistake. Right. So this seems that Hashem is agreeing to allow them to make a mistake. Yeah. Right. Which, which is difficult, as Hanoch is pointing out, because usually God allows us equal opportunities. God doesn't toss them. God doesn't let us make mistakes. And what God is really saying is, I'm going to let them make their own decision without any divine inspiration, without any help. And you know what I know? I know in my premonition, they have, they have Bechira Chavshit, they have free will, but I know if I let them up to their own walls, they're not going to be successful. Okay, but how do you convince the people with that? So, so Rashi's approach is you couldn't, and that's okay. therefore they send. Rashi says there's an inference... That Hashem says they will not succeed? Yeah. yeah. There's an inference. In other words, yeah, but let's see what Rahman says. Right. So this is, this is Rashi's approach, and that's what the Rahman is going to really take down or attack or disagree with. I won't say take down, but disagree with. Because Rashi's approach places the blame. That's why I said you've got to look for the blame. Is the blame the people, the blame Moshe, the blame the spies, or the blame the Almighty? So if you kind of tra- schlep this along the, ra- the Rashi's approach, it almost looks like, Kaviachal, it's very difficult, I don't want to say it, that the Almighty has some kind of blame here in allowing them to go ahead. The response to that, by the way, is no, God's not to blame. God's simply saying, they want to do it, they have their own decision. I'm not to blame. That's right. I'm just going to stand on the side, let them see what they want to do. In other words, like, you know, like you, you've all had situations where you, uh, whether business or, or friends or family, and people have ideas, and you know the idea is completely crazy. The idea can't succeed. And finally, they get the, the people are arguing and arguing. What do you say finally? Okay, you go do it. You do the, you do it. I know it's not going to work. You do it. No. I'm sorry? You'll learn from yourself. I know it's not possible for the sun. I, I, I'm more educated. I'm more knowledgeable. I know the laws of physics. I know this project is not going to be able to stand. But you want to figure, you, want to, you, don't, you, can't, you don't want to believe me? Go figure it out yourself. Now, I'm not really, I'm not really jinxing their mission. I'm not causing them to be unsuccessful. I'm just simply allowing them to make their own decision. So it's not really God is responsible. God is causing us to fail. God is simply saying, you guys work it out. It's basically our life, guys. It's what we do every day. Hashem says, you, I'm going to let you make the decisions. Uh, very easily God to tell us, do A, B, C. God, what should I do? Do I go right? Do I go left? Do I, do I say yes? Do I say no? Give me a sign, God. Give me a sign. Right? How many times do you say that to yourself? You don't say it, you feel it. I wish God would give me a sign. There's no sign. What's God saying? I'm not going to give you the sign. You've got to figure it out. Yeah. I've given you the ground rules. You, you have a general but sense of... You ask from Hashem, give the, 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 the right, the right decision. You ask them. You have the truth. Please help me for the right one. Right. But here, it's Hashem. You know what? I need to be mistaken. Don't go right. No, but, right. I, but in other words, I, I, don't think we're seeing, I don't think Rashi is saying... Yeah, it's, I don't think Rashi is saying... I don't think no, no. I need not ten lachem. Makom litot. I'm giving you a place, an opportunity that you can make a mistake. In other words, I give you an opportunity to say right, an opportunity to do wrong. You want to make this. I'm not saying you'll come back with a negative report. You send the spies. Maybe the spies will come back. Everything will be positive. Everybody say, yeah, yeah, yeah. God was right. Let's go do it. But I'm going to allow you the opportunity to fall in your face if you don't figure it out correctly. So it's not really that God is culpable. God is simply more laying hands hands off. So, but the decision, therefore, really, un, the approach underscores the fact that the Jewish people broke. They should not have sent spies because God already told them land is good. But, Rabbi, you know we always ask for Hashem. Please, we have to give us the right decision. We yep. know the truth, but we got the right. I don't hear the answer. No. I promise, I don't hear the answer. Okay. I don't hear the answer from Hashem. So this, what I do in the end is that Hashem help me. Yeah, correct. So I don't know is Hashem helping me or is Hashem is saying I'm going to help you because I already told you what to do in the so past. So here Hashem not help Period. That's correct. Because they, uh, yes, it's not. But uh, isn't it very human to be discouraged the same way we have a meeting, I won't be able to do it, and, then, yeah. and you need the encouragement. Yet you can do it, correct. and you do it. So in fact, there was that, some of that encouragement coming from Kalev and Yoshua. 
Remember, it's a split decision. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not an equally split decision, but 10 against and 2 for. It happened to be the people sided overwhelmingly and would despise the negativity. But it wasn't all, it wasn't 100% bad. It was, two, it was 80%, 8 to, eight to 2. It just needed some encouragement. Right. The encouragement was land is good. Yeah, That's I mean, why I said the other part, the unspoken part is, yes, they need encouragement, but are they, can they be encouraged? Or at the end of the day, is, is this whole story an indication that they really weren't ready, able to do so? Like the person who has this idea for the project, they don't know the laws of physics. They think they can put up this hut, put up the shack, and you know the laws of physics say it's not going to stand, and they're going to do it themselves. Now, if they really sat down and thought hard about it, instead of running pig-headed to do it, they would probably put up stronger beams, more reinforcements, but they say, no, it can stand up this way. But whose fault is that? So it's their fault. It's not discouraging. They just didn't do their homework. Anyways, this is approach number one. I don't say that you have to like it. I don't say you should like it, but the Ram, in fact, the Ramban does not. We don't like it. Okay? <laughs> so A, it, A puts, it puts God in a bad light. It also puts, by the way, not just God in a bad light, it puts Moshe in a bad light. Because Moshe takes the request of the people. He's their emissary. He's their advisor. He's their leader. He should have shut the people down. Instead, he goes to Hashem. The people came to Moshe and they said, what should we do? We want to send spies. What should Moshe have said? I'm, I've been speaking to you guys here, not me. Moshe says, I'm, I've been telling you all along, it's Eretz Tova, it's a good land. So says the Ramban, V'yesh kan l'shol, and therefore the question that Ramban asks, and Cain, Moshe at Moshe is himself is really as culpable. Because if you look in the version in Devorim chapter 1, where the people come to Moshe, so Moshe says, Moshe said it was good. I thought it was good. We sent spies, and guess what? It fell apart. So therefore, so why did Moshe, why did why Moshe becomes equally culpable as the people for sending through the mission? And therefore, why does Moshe even here say, And why does Moshe say to the Meraglim, Why does Moshe say when he sends the Meraglim, Go and see if the land is good or bad? Moshe already told the people it's good. That's interesting. Because God told Moshe, He said, I'm going to take the people out of the Ani Mitzrayim, I'm going to take them to Eretz Tovah, and now, now the people said, we want to find out if it's good or bad. Moshe's response should have been, I told you it was good. God already told me it was good. Yeah, but he didn't tell the people. But I did. I've told you now. Now, well, God, now I'm going to tell. So if he didn't tell them, he's going to tell them now. So why does Moshe seem to say, "Well, now let's go find out if it's really good"? It almost looks like Moshe himself had certain doubts, right? So if already it, it had said in, in, in early Rome when God spoke to them, it's Eretz Tova, and previously there were also references to be a land of good land. So why is it now Moshe suddenly reopening this as part of the mission of the spies to say, find out if it's good? Moshe already told the people it's a good land. And that's one question. Second question. So, so maybe Moshe is the guilty party. Second question, Ramban. The old. May I assume Raglim? What did the Raglim do that's so bad? Ki Moshe Malohem. Moshe spelled told the people, and we just saw this in looking at the Chumash when we started today. He says, Uritem Adarts Mahi. He told them Raglim, go see the land, what it is, and see it's Aam Adarts Mahi, the land, the Arts Arma Yeshev, the people living there. Chazaku Arafez, it's Are the people strong? Are the people weak? Hamatu and Rav. Are they few? Are they many? And Moshe said, "Find out about the cities. Habamachanim b'mivtzarim. Are the cities and are the cities um, built and not built up? Are the cities fortified? Are they open? Or are they fortified?" The Meraglim had to come back with a response. Moshe said, find out if the people are strong, find out if the people are weak, find out if the cities are fortified, find out if the cities are not fortified. So what did the Meraglim do bad? So what did the Meraglim do when Moshe commanded them in verse 18 and 19 to find out the strong cities and strong people? And the Meraglim came back at the end of the mission, verse 28, and they said, Yeah, however, the people are strong. The cities are very mighty fortified. I mean, who said the sin? Who said to who they said? They said to Moshe or the Am? They said to Am. So one of the responses someone said before is that they should have spoken to the Am. They should have reported to Moshe. Okay, but the people, but you can argue the people wanted to find out about the land. The people asked Moshe to send the spies. Moshe asked Hashem, Hashem said send the spies. So the spies are reporting to Moshe and to the people. And probably, it's probably not a good idea to report just to Moshe. The people would have complained about collusion, disinformation. You know what happens today when we, we don't get transparency. 
But the bottom line is, says Ramban, did Moshe send the people to come back with a negative report to say, not negative, come back with false? They expect the people to come back and say, Anna, this is a walk in the park. Anna, this is easy shmeezy. The cities are wide open. The people are weak. They expect them to lie. Don't think, this is what Dan said before, that what the, evil, the bad thing was when they said the land swallows up its inhabitants. Don't say that was their sin. Why? Because Kalev jumps up and, and attacks them, Raglim, even before they say that. Even before they say in verse 32, it's a land that swallows its inhabitants. What exactly That's does only, that mean? It means that you... Swampy land or what? Means that, well, it can mean a lot of things, but it means that if we try to move in, we'll be, swall- we'll be sucked into the land. We'll be, we'll be, we won't be able to be successful. Like when the early pioneers went out west and they couldn't make a living, they died there. Yes. They didn't survive. You didn't make it through the winter. So that's what it means. It means it gets sucked up into land like Korach. It means the land that it's a very difficult land to make a living in. It just kills, it kills the people who are working there. Some land, some jobs, like, you know, You've heard the expression, people were looking at a job interview, and someone says to them, this job is going to kill you. <laughs> you don't want this job. This job will kill you. What That's do they right. mean? The job is not going to kill you. It means you're going to get so, so much shagmas nefesh, so much heartache, and so much dis- discouragement that you'll be, you'll, be depressed. you'll be completely depressed. You won't be a, you'll, you'll be a broken person. So, but, but that's only said at the very end. The initial, the initial yeah. problem that comes up is what they simply report on what really they saw. So, so what did the Mraglim do? We're making the Mraglim as the boogeyman here. In fact, they are. They get killed, obviously. But what did they do wrong? They simply, they were given a mission, come back with this report. Here's the checklist. They said, this is what we found. The Chen Kasuv, and then Chen Katuv says the Ramban, and look, if you go to the Devarim, Chen Devarim, and when Moshe speaks to the Jewish people at the end of the 40 years, and the book of Devarim is Moshe's number of soliloquies that Moshe speaks to the people before he dies, in that last year, the last months of his life. This is the generation later. So Moshe uses much of the similar terminology that Maraglim used. Moshe says, he says, The Moshe says that your, our, our brothers made you weak by saying it's a great and strong nation with Arim Gedolot of Tzorot Bashamayim. And they said as well, Moshe says to the people, You know what? 40 years before they came back with this report and they discouraged you. Moshe recounts what happened. So why would Moshe want to dredge up? This very kind of, kind of same ideas that the Moraglim said earlier if he's trying to encourage the people to go into the land of Israel. This is negative psychology, you know? You tell them that it's well, your, your, your parents made mistakes. You don't make mistakes by doing that. Don't do the same kind <laughs> don't of... Don't do the same thing. Don't do the same thing that that's they a, did. That's a negative uh, sort of way of getting around it. Well, perhaps. Perhaps that's what Moshe is trying to do. But it looks like Moshe is really just simply recounting what they, what they did. So, um, so Moshe tells, recounts the whole story, and he makes sure the people remember what exactly they came back, what the Meraglim came back. So if this is such a bad thing, don't you want to just let it die? Why bring it up 40 years later? It must have been that it was really true. And then it says also in chapter 14 in Dvarim, Moshe says to the people, in Paul Bacher of that the people complained. This is when Moshe speaks later on in Sefer Dvarim. Um, okay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's talking about the later in the story of the Muraglim story that the people say, So, what later in the story of the I'm sorry, I wasn't listening carefully, but Moshe here says in recording the story that the people were complaining, Why do we want to go to Israel now? This is the story that's taking place now with the Muraglim. We're going to die in the sword. Our wives and children will be taken for captive. Forty years later, Moshe recounts the same thing. Moshe Rabbein Omalev. Moshe spoke to the people 40 years later and he talked about how strong the country was. Moshe speaks in Dvarim chapter 9 when he speaks to the next generation. He says how strong the people actually are at that point, almost to discourage them, almost, if you think about it, to discourage them the same way the Meraglim tried to discourage these people. So Moshe is talking about the people are going to go into Eretz Yisrael. And Moshe says to them as follows, I'll just read you very quickly, chapter 9, Devarim. 
Hear, O Israel, today you cross the Jordan to come drive out nations that are greater and mighty than you. Cities that are great and fortified up to the heaven. Moshe's telling the people, you guys, 40 years later, you're about to go in. What do you go what's facing you? People are greater. People are mightier than you. Cities are fortified to the heavens. A great and lofty people. Children of giants. The same term. You knew and about whom you heard. Who can stand up against the children of you the giants? So these are the last words of Moshe. So what does Moshe say? Hey guys, you're about to go into the land, and the land is a difficult land. It's got giants, got strong cities. Why would Moshe say this as his last words of encouragement to the Jewish people? It's not exactly what the Maglim said that was discouraging. Right? And the answer, by the way, is the, ne- is the, the next line of what Moshe says in, in 40 years later. He says, You'll know that Hashem goes before you. He's a consuming fire. He'll destroy them. He'll subjugate them as Hashem has spoken to you. So now Moshe con- continues and says, yes, they are big, they're strong and everything, but God's with you. In right. all fairness, they knew that before too. That God was with them? Here. Here or 40 years later? No, 40 years before. Yes, they did. But the Maraglim didn't say that. That's, the, that's, the, that's where, the, where, the, where things go off the rails. In other words, what the, what the, what the, what the Ramban wants to say is the idea of sending Maraglim and coming back with a mission and talking about the strengths and weaknesses <coughs> and difficulties of attacking yeah. the land is not a bad thing. Right. It's, this is what you want to do. The problem was they never said, "But God will take care of us. God will help yeah, us." But they've heard all that before. There was no big joke. After, one at a time. They've heard all that before. Or that after Muhammad hung the all. Yes. When they saw how strong God was. Yeah. Okay, maybe but so. Hanoch Hanoch was saying they've already had experience against some of the kings yeah. on the east side of the Jordan. They saw that God can be victorious against them. Right. Good point. Yeah. Yes. No, he's going to say that the whole history is based on the fact that Hashem is with them. Yes. From the beginning, right from letting go from Egypt. Correct. So we, we all agree with this. So what I'm trying to say is where the Ramban is going with this approach is not the problem with the people had an idea they came to Moshe. Moshe said, I'm not sure about the Let me ask God. God. God said to them, it's a bad idea, but if you guys want to do it, go hang yourselves. This is not a bad idea, says the Ramban. Medrash seems to say that this is that God didn't feel this was a good idea. Ramban says this was a great idea. You guys are clever. You want to go tackle land. You've got to find other strong points where you can exploit things where you can. The problem was when they came back, they only gave the report without giving the understanding of what the data was. The data said that you can do it. Hashem is with us. Hashem wants us to go to the land. Well, it was a self-serving report, too. It may have been self-serving, correct, as the Medrash says. They wanted to keep their jobs, says the Medrash. They felt they were leaders. They would lose that leadership when they came to the land of Israel. So they twisted it to kind of ensure they would stay in office at the expense of the future of the Jewish people. They you had a comment before, or we're going ahead, okay? So in other words, the next question, Ramban, is really the report itself is not so bad, because Moshe says the same thing 40 years later. And if, and just finishing off, and if this was the error of the Maraglim, that they exaggerated the land, why would Moshe 40 years later try to mislead the people, or try to emphasize the negativity of the land? One couple more questions Ramban asks, well, he's got two more questions here. Viod matam Moshe Rabbein Mishlech Adadot. Says Ramban, most basic question: Why would Moshe even send this? Why would Moshe want to agree to this? Why would Moshe take the request of the people and present it to God, or decide to do it? Imar tzavav yam rafeh. If the land is good, harayto. So then Moshe wins, or the people win. And if they come back with a negative report, did Moshe think he can turn back? What would be the reason why Moshe would agree to this request? Now you may say you couldn't control the people. That's right. right. But Moshe is saying, okay, you know what, this is a reasonable request. Let me ask God. But what could Moshe benefit? In the best case scenario, the spies would come back and say it's a great land. Okay. But I told you that. In the worst case scenario, the spies will say we can't go into the land. What's Moshe going to say? Let's turn around. We're going back to Mitzrayim. There's no turning back. There's no other choice. There is no plan B. So why offer the people, why seem to send the spies to offer a choice to the people when there is no choice? It's almost really kind of misleading the people. So the whole idea of what Rashi seemed to, what Rashi quoted in the name of the Medrash, this was the people's idea, Moshe went along with it, and they asked God, and God said, well, I think it's a bad idea, but if you guys want to do it, go ahead and do it and hang yourselves. Says the Ramban does not seem to be in line with what the simple story is all about, and, he, and all the questions that he's asked about Moshe, asking that 40 years later, Moshe agreeing to this, that it's really logical, the spy simply reported what they saw, but here comes the Ramban's approach. Aval, Yeshuvan Yan Bezer, 
The understanding of this um, mission is, or the, the topic is, Kisrael Amru Kedera Kol Boim Lilachem Beretz Nachri Adin. Israelites did exactly like any people who are attempting to conquer and attack a land. They did nothing wrong. They did what is natural and normal. Sheshok Lufnei Manosh Nodat Advachim Mavoharim. They sent ahead people, spies, pre, um, scouts, to find out where are the roads, where are the trails, where are the entrances to the cities, how do you get around. Ubushuvam, when these spies return, Yelchua Tarim Barosha Tzava Lorot Lufnei Madrachim. Then they come back, they will show the people, the, the army, which is the way. They did not have drones. You had to send scouts on the ground. Yoshua sends two spies before they go in. They end up in Yericho. He sends the scouts ahead to find out what is the, what is the news on the ground. What do people think about these Israelites? And what happened? They come to Rachav. They find out that people are terrified. The Canaanites are terrified, not the Jews. And they come back and bring back their report. That's the whole story of Yericho. King in Shinemar, as it says in Shoftim, Harenu Noat Mavohir. It's another story where different people send ahead to be spies. Veshiit Nulahem Eitza Beezu Ir Yilachem Utchila. That they decided, this is the beginning of Shoftim Aleph, where they try to decide which, which country or which region to attack first. So you have this, uh, this, um, um, this meetings based upon the data that you've collected to figure out where you begin to attack first. And they decide that Yehuda is going to attack his country first, his area first. In other words, the beginning of Shoftim talks how the different campaigns were organized. They didn't all happen simultaneously because you couldn't divide up the people into 12 different groups. So certain tribes attacked first and certain tribes attacked second and later. And you decide how you, which city you're going to attack, which way you're going to go is easier to, to get into. And this is what actually it says in, cha- in Dvarim chapter 1. When the spies came back, the spies came back and they told us the way we can go, the cities we can attack. This was part of the report of the spies. It's not mentioned here in Sefer Bamidbar and Parshat Shlach, but it is mentioned in Parshat Dvarim when it talks about what the spies were at. They said the, the cities which we're going to attack and how do we get into land. That's not wrong. That's great. That's clever. Is it, it's not miraculous. But then again, they weren't installed to, to, to attack miraculously. God did not say, I'm going to split the sea. God did not say, I'm going to bring ten plagues. God says, you're going to go into the land, and you're going to get this land. You've got to attack it. This is a clever or a wise or a proper decision or etza or advice. And anyone who attacks lands, and Moshe himself did this later in the end of Sefer Dvarim, when they went to attack some small areas on the way to Eretz Yisrael. Shnemar says in, in Pasha's, I don't recall if it's Pinchas or, or Matos, or maybe before, maybe Chukas Balak, where it says, Vaishlach Moshe Lavagel at Yazir. The Moshe sent out spies to spy out the area of Yazir. And Yoshua ben Nun did the same story when he sent two Mraglim, Shnai Manashim Mraglim, and they ended up in Yericho. When the people came, Moshe thought it was a great idea. These last four words, five words, are very important because the Torah doesn't want us to rely upon miracles. Life these, these two times when they send them to the yeah. when they come, they didn't give to everybody, they give only to the Yeshua. Okay. Fine. That, that is a difference. So maybe they couldn't avoid giving to these people because yeah. the people is the people's idea. But so the concept of sending spies, how the information was managed, the problem was managing the information, not the information itself. Right? It's not the gathering of the information, it's how the information was handled when it returned. They let the, they weren't able to control the buzzwords. They weren't able to control the news feed, right? So the news became fake news almost. There's nothing wrong with sending spies. You can't rely upon God. Help God, you provide. You bring in the military. You bring in the air, in the air support. That doesn't happen. You've got to protect yourself from from traps, from 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 uh, being captured, from how to get around. I like the, actually we're told in the in the second battle in in Eretz Yisrael, the battle against I Shaitah Pi Hashem that it was to Hashem. But it was not successful. And it happens many times. So Moshe then, when the people came to Moshe and said, you know what, proper, uh, proper battle strategy is to know how to get into the land. Moshe said, let me ask God. And God said, yes, okay, that's a good idea. Go scout out the land. Let them come back. Let them tell you. And with the knowledge they give you, and they give you advice, they will be successful. Now, obviously, you're going to say, didn't God know what was going to go off the rails? Didn't God know what was going to happen? That's a general question we always ask. 
But that's not, that's not a fair question because that's about God know, always knows what will happen. Yeah, we have free choice. God said this is the right thing to do. This is how to best be prepared. And in fact, says Ramban, look at exactly what Moshe does. Vine Moshe Mar. What does Moshe tell him in chapter in verse seventeen? Aluzeh benegev, go up the negev. Why did Moshe say go up the negev? Aluzeh benegev, derech negev. She do it. Amir shvei beres negev and pater vuach she yisrael sham. They want to know the people in the south because that's where the Israelites were. Sinai is in the south, so the people are somewhere in the Sinai Peninsula, going up north into the land of Eretz Yisrael, which will be the way they go in is through the negev. Forty years later, by the way, they don't come in that way. Forty years later, they come in for Jordan. They come in through the Jordan River on the east side. They're in what is today Jordan and they cross. But right at this point, they're in the south. So that's the way Moshe says, find out the south because that's going to be the first attack. Find out, is it going to be strong? So we'll have to be very careful. Have to allow a strong army. Are they strong cities? Are they fortified cities? If we go to fight against these walled cities, we're going to need to build, and the Ramban is using terminology that he's acquainted with in medieval conflict, where they built siege machines. So we'll need to build up ramparts, we'll need to build up siege walls, we'll need to build up earthen walls so we can attack a, a walled city. Mm-hmm. Whatever, no, the Ramban is simply saying, if it's an open city, you don't have to go through this kind of thing. So we need to know how to best be prepared. If we're going to fight a city, we need to start building the armaments now. With their different armaments for different types of landscape and different types of geography. If the cities are too strong, we'll, we'll go around them and we'll attack, we'll attack from, from a different side. Find out about the land. Find out the land is great. Find out the land is good. If it's good, good, not good. Because if, it's, uh, if the land is bad, not that the land is bad. It's not a good land to be able to attack. If the land is not fertile. So we don't want to attack non-fertile land because we won't be able to get a foothold. We want to attack land that's fertile to put in our first settlements, begin planting and growing. It's fertile land, tova, and then we can keep growing, going in. If the first land we end up as swamps, we're in trouble. Because these pits of spies went up to, to, to Haramori, which is near Hebron. They went further up past the Negev, all the way in. Even Yoshua did not attack, the, did not cover, conquer the entire country. So Moshe wanted to find out about the people in the Negev. Should I go right into the Negev? Should I go around the Negev? Where should we start and so forth? It's possible, says Raman, the fact that Moshe already knew the land was good. Remember the Raman said, why would Moshe send spies if he knew the land was good? What's in it for Moshe? So that's, Raman turns around and says, you know what? The fact that Moshe knew the land was good, as Moshe said to them earlier on in Shmos chapter 3, that God is going to take you, so the fact that Moshe knew the land was good, he was kind of setting up these, the system to win. He told the spies, come back and make sure that you take note of being a good land, like I promised you, when you come back and say, you know what, the land is good, like Moshe told us, everybody would be encouraged to go on. That's why I said to them, be strong, go strong, and bring back from the fruit of the land, that they'll see. People see how great the fruit was. This big chunk of grapes, this big cluster of grapes they're carrying with two poles. The grapes were either thick or big or fat or whatever it was. So then it will show the people that it really was good. So, says the Ramban, so this was really all logical, and the fact that Moshe threw in to come back and let us know if the land is good was really to encourage the people, because Moshe knew the land was good. Now, says Ramban, He says, you know what, the people really knew something about the land. Moshe knew something about the land. This is not going off to, to across the ocean, where people knew nothing about when the explorers came to discover the new world. People knew the different countries. If, how do they know different countries? They heard about the different countries. If you live, if you live in, if you live here, you know the topography about what takes place in Barry. You have a general sense of where the snow belt is. You know, there's more snow coming off the lakes between between Kemperfeld Bay and and lakes Lake uh, Lake Huron. So how do you know that? People have told you. People get around. So people in Mitzrayim must have known the, basically about the land of Israel. So in other words, it's not that they didn't know the land. It's only seven days' journey away. The end of Israel is close to the land of Egypt, where along the, where the Suez is. 
V'yem sh'esh lo'idu adorim mitzvahim in yon eretz k'nan and tzvahim ra. It's not possible that people didn't know is it a good land. People must have known the land of Israel has certain fertile areas. What did Moshe really want to know? The real purpose of sending the spies is not to know that Israel is fertile. People must have known that Israel is fertile. They knew it was not such a bad place. It wasn't the best place, but it was a land that was good. But they didn't know how to get in. Maybe the slaves, the Jewish people slaves, they didn't know. But Moshe, as a person in the palace, the people in Pharaoh's palace must have had a good sense of the topography and the fertility of the lands around them. Yep. People knew if you went from the land of Egypt and you went up to Mesopotamia, you didn't take a straight road through the Arabian Peninsula. Because it was all desert. You went all the way around in what's called, they call the Fertile Crescent. You go up through northern Syria and come around because that's what's passable. So the Israelites didn't know it, but Moshe knew that because he was an Egyptian prince. He wanted the spies to come back and support that. And to really to be happy with the, the, the assets of the land of Israel, that he knew them. Okay, so therefore, this is the approach that Ramban so far, that Moshe knew this was a good idea. People came to Moshe's great idea, let's go do it. And then, uh, so far, it looks like Moshe asks Hashem, and what does Hashem say? Great idea. Yeah, but it's, it's like looking at the world today and saying, yeah, Iran has beautiful, fertile lands, but so let's move to Iran. Let's move to Russia. Let's move to all these countries that are completely up, you know, against uh, our people. It's the same thing. So you send spies to look at it. Right. So if you were working for a company and the company said, you know, Ben Zakane, you've got to go to Iran for two years. Yeah. We need to open up a subsidiary. You have, you have the expertise. You've got to go to Iran. Let's forget the anti-Semitism, those kind of issues. And you know what? We're going to pay your expenses, and you don't have no choice. You can't stay here. We're not offering that to you. So before you'd go, before you'd go, you would find out where, where the best place is to, to move. Yeah. Right. You'd, want, <laughs> you'd, Google. Right. you'd Google it. Today you'd Google it. In those days, but Google now Iran it. is pretty far away. Yes. Right? But if the company said to you, we're going to send you out to BC, you'd begin to find out where you want to move in BC before you simply just arrive there with all your bags. So that's not bad. That's not finding out about the land, and it's possible to find the land out. So that's what, what the Ramban is saying. The fact Moshe... The people, it's easy to find their information. Moshe must have known living in Egypt what the neighbors were all about, what were the countries were. Yeah. The people, the slaves, did not know. I know. And I'm thinking of coming from Morocco. If somebody told, me, told us that the weather in Canada was going to be the way it was, <laughs> we're they staying come? in Morocco. <laughs> because I remember the first winter here yeah. was a Esk- death. Esk- <laughs> so, so far, yeah. Rambam, so far... The shalach lacha is, is the lacha is, is mamish for Moshe's sake to bring the people right. into the same level of knowledge right. that he has. So shalach lacha looks like God is saying that this is a good idea, and for Moshe thinks Moshe. it's a good idea, and it's a good idea for Moshe. Correct. So Ramban is going to tweak this in a moment. What, you understand what the father is saying? Why is God? Why is he speaking with God? What's God saying to Moshe? What's, where does God get involved? They should just send people. I'm not sure if that's what you're saying or not. Maybe I'm putting more into your words. No, I'm saying that the lacha. I'm, the people that you're sending, it's a good idea. Send them, it's, it, but it's for your sake okay. that you're sending them. So it's so and the whole, the whole it's idea because, seems because you're getting the people to know to really know it's about the land. Okay, so so. What Rafael is saying, I think I got what Rafael is saying, and then I can actually tell you what the next piece of Ramban is going to say. What, what Rafael is saying is that the idea comes from the people. They come to Moshe. Moshe thinks it's a great idea, and it is a great idea. It's a clever idea because that's what you do when you go conquer people. And then Moshe goes to Hashem, and Hashem says, this is a good idea because people will see that you're right. right? So that's what, that's what it looks like the Ramban is saying until now. But before we, but, but Ramban is actually going to say now that he thinks it's a little bit different. Right. He thinks that God was not even involved in this decision-making process at all. This, this is a, Get, sorry, just listen for a moment. Yeah, yes, yes, in other words, sure. the people, let's finish the Ramban. <laughs> people, I just told you briefly, we'll jump into it, then we'll hold the questions so we get a better sense of what it is. The people come to Moshe, or the people and Moshe agree that this is a good idea how to attack the land, because this makes a whole lot of sense in terms of a strategy and information gathering. Right. And only after Moshe descend, decides to send the spies, to send the scouts, does God add certain pieces into it. So God is really not even offering the idea. God is simply saying, if you're going to do this, and it's a good idea, first of all, I'm going to put my, my, my imprimatur on it. 
I'm going to sign on on it and tell you that you can use my signature as well, which will give it a added impetus, and not only added impetus, but the fact that Hashem wants it to be successful will help it be can help it be successful. Hashem is put not Hashem is, is saying go do it and hang yourself. God is actually saying the other way around. I'm going to agree that's a good idea. Not just that people will learn that you're right, Moshe, because that's the right thing to do. And then the Raman says something else. And if you're going to send people as spies, Moshe, I'm going to tell you something else that I'm going to think is you should add to your plan. And this is what the Shlach Lecha is. God says, if you're going to send spies, don't just send two. Don't just... I'll tell you why. Because don't just send from a representative group of a small number of your nation. Have the representative scouts be completely representative of the people. So that, you know what, it's all for one... It's not supposed to be quiet. It's actually supposed to be collecting information because this way everybody will buy into it. They're the ambassadors. They're the ambassadors for each of the tribes and all the tribes will now come together and will say, this is a great idea. We have the information. My guy, my rep went and brought back the information that's going to help me. Your rep brought the information will help you. We're all into this. So Hashem, Hashem feels that even if there is a, some kind of disagreement, there are enough people around that you can have a variety of opinions that the ultimate decision has a good chance of being successful. God doesn't guarantee it. They're still making their own decision. But Hashem saying, Shlach L'cha is not even about making the decision. It's simply, you've made the right decision. You made the decision, and the decision is good. What I'm just going to simply add in is secondary pieces of this. A, yes, put my name on the bottom. Send it out under my signature. Right? Or say, say that Hashem thinks it's a good idea too, which will give it greater impetus to be successful, both in terms of merit and success and people supporting it. And second of all, um, make sure that you have representatives equally spread around. So let me do that piece inside Vian. Sorry, just one point before that. Yeah. In the jury system, where a person is being tried, yeah. and... Quick, because I want to get Yeah, no, no. This. So the person is, innocent person, is found guilty. Yeah. And they go to the death chamber and that's it. Yeah. So the thing is that these men also made decisions, but they made the wrong decisions. Well, they made a wrong decision. We have to find out what the wrong because decision is. Because they were in a hurry to get home to have supper, or their wives are working, and they well, have a party to go so to. The, the, so there, the, there is injustice in any system of justice that can happen, but the idea of a jury system is, first of all, your trial by peers. Yeah, so trial by high, spies. Okay, and also importantly, the fact that you have a number of jury people, they can dine to back and forth. Sometimes you have a deadlock jury. Okay. You have jury people, you have 20 jurors, and 18 feel guilty and 2 feel not guilty. And then they get sequestered and they got to argue back and forth to convince either the 2 or the 2 to convince the 18. And hopefully they come to a decision, or otherwise it's a deadlock jury and the whole thing falls apart. Even though okay. there's 18 in favor and 2 against? Right, they have to, the jury has to come yeah, to one decision, yeah. one decision on behalf of all. Okay, let's go to Ramban. And this is what, what, I, what says Ramban, what I really think is happening here. And this is where he says what I just told you about. Moshe didn't go to Hashem. Moshe didn't ask God, this is a good idea. When Moshe said, I'm going to send you, they had already agreed to send Malachim. They normally send two, two secret, Cheresh means secret, quiet people to go. That's what the other case of Maraglim we have, probably Yoshua. In other cases, you send two people. No, you didn't send a lot because you want to keep it quiet. A few would go. And the Almighty who knows the future, He knows what's going to happen. The Almighty knows where this is going to go. He can't influence it because it's free choice. He can't change the decisions because they make their own decisions. But Hashem wants to kind of maybe behind the scenes maybe tweak things. God felt that it could help the process be more successful by having one rep from each each each, each um, tribe. If you want to see and they should be the Nassim, the leaders. Don't just choose schleppers. Don't just choose people who want to go for dinner earlier. Choose Nassim. They should be as equally great all among them. Each one should be an equal leader. Each one should be a leader of their tribe. We're dealing with peers among peers, higher peers. In case they got a bad idea, they'll return to Hashem. And if they don't, if they, if they do come back with a negative report, because God knows the future, at least it'll be shared about all of them. Can you imagine what would happen if they came back and two spies from two tribes, and two tribes say we're not going in, and ten tribes say we are going in. Suddenly two tribes get wiped out. What would Jewish issue be completely off the rails? And this is what it means that he does it with Hashem. A 
that God said they should all be Nisim, the, the, the scouts should be Nisim leaders, heads of the Jewish people, and one for every tribe. Vanire, all right, Vanire line, it seems to me, as the Torah says, that according to what I'm saying, that God didn't mention to Moshe the request. In other words, God didn't say to Moshe that people were going to request this. Not that God said to Moshe that people are going to ask this and I think it's a good idea. And then go tell the people it's good. Because the Torah would have written it that way. It doesn't say that. It simply says that the God says, if you're going to do it, this is how to do it. So rather, only later would say God would say to Moshe do what the people told you rather God is coming on at the very end the people asked to send the Maglim and then it's Ramani even tweaks it a little different than what I said the people came to Moshe Moshe thought it's a great idea then Hashem said to Moshe you know what you're here you're send- I hear Moshe you guys are sending and he said, "Sends people. Go send people together. I want to add a couple of new ideas to what you're doing. Not that I'm telling you what they're going to do. You've already decided to do it. I want to add a couple ideas. God wanted to make the shlichut, this mission, according to his command. God wanted his name to sign on to this in order to give it a better chance of success. And, and, and therefore all of them went to Moshe, they came to ask the request, to go and so forth and so on. And, and that's really what's happening here in terms of the Meraglim story. And we haven't really told you how it goes off the rails. And this is um, the, the way the story takes place. And the Ramban goes through, we'll just skip the next paragraph or so. And at the very end, the Ramban says, I'll give you a third interpretation. So Ramban basically says what I've said until now, right? We got this piece. And they're sending the spies, which is good. We haven't told you how it goes bad. Um, then the Ramban says at the very end, V'yadad Rabotenu, what was their sin? This comes back to what we mentioned at the beginning, then we'll take the break. V'yadad Rabotenu, Chadu B'yamram, Nishlachan Hashim L'fanenu, we're going to send people in front of us, B'avur Shem Roim, at Yeshuat Hashem HaShir Selon Tzmin. We're going to find out what God does to them. V'hayelelem L'lechet Achrei Hanan El Asher Shama Haruach L'lechet. The sin according to the Medrash, is quoting a different Medrash in Rashi, is that the people even send spies. They decided that Moshe accepted them, L'malo Tavotam, because they had a lot of kabitachon. This is pretty similar to what Rashi said. God, said, God accepted their, their evil. God accepted their negativity. And God agreed to it in the same way that when Moshe, when the people came to Shmuel, the people came to Shmuel and said, We want a king. And Shmuel felt that they were rejecting him. So God said to Moshe, don't, God said to, Sh- to Shmuel, don't worry Shmuel. They're not really rejecting you, Shmuel. What do the people want a king for? Because they're rejecting me. So sometimes Hashem goes along with the decisions of the people, even though it's not negative. And so they, even though it's not positive, and it is negative. So Hashem is willing to let us go, and that's where the approach that Rashi is saying. So Rashi's whole approach is based upon the fact that, A, it's not Moshe's sins, but Moshe goes along with it, Hashem goes along with it, because people can decide what they want to do, and they can reject Hashem. And there are other stories in the Torah that talk about that rejection. Korach, the Madonanim, all the other types of complaints that happen where the people seem to reject Hashem. And Hashem doesn't say, you can't do it. You have the free choice to make those decisions. What we haven't really told you is where, so where does the mission go wrong? According to Ramban, if everything is so good, if everything is so good, so where, where does the mission go wrong? What is the error? Because they come back with whatever the report's supposed to be. So, um, yeah, this, this is a story of kill the messenger with bad news, right? If you come with bad news, you, you, you sacrifice. No, no, no. That's no, what it used no, to be. No, no, no. No, so the Ramban says later on in this chapter, in, in the Ramban on Chavzai, and we'll just say it very quickly because, you know, it'll take your time to find it. They, they came back, they said everything that they were supposed to say. Um, it's been Pasuk Chavzai, Vinei Bechol Zemru Emet, the messengers, the scouts said that Pasuk Chavzai, 
Yeah, but they didn't make it all possible. Let me tell. They said exactly what they're supposed to say. They were supposed to say the people are strong and the cities are fortified. Okay. They were supposed to bring back the truthful report to the person who sent them, which is Moshe or Hashem. That Moshe said to them, Find out strong, is it weak? Is it fortified? Not fortified. Aval, the Raman says this, four words here, Risham, their wickedness, their error was, Bimilat, Ephes. When they said Ephes, however, but, the word Ephes in Hebrew means what? Zero. The word, the modern Hebrew for zero, there is no word for zero in Old Hebrew, but the word for Hebrew for, for zero is Ephes. Ephes. So Ephes means it's not the zero. They're basically, they're saying, something that is impossible, has no chance of success to be to reach this. There is no possibility for us to reach this. Is it ever possible to, to understand God's um, um, chesed forever? There's nothing like God that is, that is close, that is, uh, there's nothing like God. It means nothing. So FS means nothing. It means but, however, however it ain't possible. It's a negativity, however. It's alas, however. It can't happen, however. However, it ain't going to be. <coughs> so that when they insert the one word, so the one word is the one word that can change, how one word can kill. Right? Everything is good except it's FS ki asam. So the one word that's the one. Everything is FS. Had they left out the word FS, they said, it's right, the people are strong, but FS! It's not possible to do it. That's the, the, it's before Kalev says it. It's before Kalev. And, and Kalev's answer, that's why Kalev says it's not Ephes. We yeah. can do it. What is Kalev saying? Kalev doesn't say the people are weak and the cities are open. Kalev says, no. Vayomer, alo naleg, Mirash knows that we can do it. Kiyachol nuchala. We can do it. And, and Hashem has told us to do it. And the people say, no, well, we can't do it. And, and, and why did God bring us here to, to die? And Moshe and Aaron don't know what to do. And they all give up. And what does Kalev say? They say, "Hearts are shavarnu bala tura tata tavarats miyom miyom." It's good. This is just the, just to tell you what the continuation of Kalev and Yeshua say. Im chafeitz bano Hashem veviyo tano alaretz azod. If God wants us, God will bring us to the land. Unatalan alano will give it to us. Zavat er zavat chalav adavash. However, ach b'ashem al tumrodu. Don't rebel against Hashem because if you rebel against Hashem, you can't do that. And what was the people's response when Kalev and Yeshua said that? They took stones, they wanted to stone them. Yep. Yeah. So the point of it being, the actual request to send spies was not bad. They blew it by how they presented it by adding one word. Sometimes one word can kill. Okay, I'll take so, a look. Sounds like a... Uh...